my heart is beating so fast. And, and I'm not a professional public speaker. I, I have only been up in front of a microphone for maybe three times. And the stories I've heard tonight, this is a highlight of my, I think, of my life, to meet in person and hearing your stories. <laughs> when you talk about how you felt with a baby in your womb, I thought of my birth mother, and I thought of her feeling me in her womb, and how much she loved me. You know, uh, my name is Patty Smith, and I, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm from Huntington Beach, California. <laughs> I get around the Texans and I start talking like a Texan. <laughs> start saying shoot howdy and all that, but uh, I just love Texas. It's really great. Uh, but my, I was born in the 50s, way before Road versus Wade. Uh, my birth mother was raped uh, in 1955 by a, uh, her roommate's um, boyfriend. And... Uh, similar to yours and uh, she um, she was working in a hospital and she told no one she was so ashamed she told no one and I didn't hear the whole story because I wasn't unable to meet I met my birth mother but I only knew her for a year before she passed on so I don't have the whole story and oh how I wish I did but I thought we had more time and we didn't um, but uh, let me tell you a story about a miracle how many of you have had miracles in your life? How many of you have died? Okay. I, I, I don't believe in coincidences, and this is the biggest, if it was a coincidence, the biggest coincidence in the world. Because what do, I always think, what are the odds? I grew up knowing that I was adopted. I didn't know that I was conceived in rape. But I had wonderful adoptive parents who adopted me when I was about a month old. And... Uh, um, I have an older sister who was also adopted. We're not blood related. And my mom had a twin sister and they both couldn't conceive. And so she, her twin sister adopted two boys and she adopted the two girls. And we all grew up together. And um, my mother was a daughter of a preacher. I grew up in church. I went to Sunday school every Sunday. I walked to church with my adoptive dad hand in hand. I was his princess. <laughs> he used to say I sung like an angel. <laughs> And uh, he, he was my hero. He, was, he could do no wrong. Um, he died when I was 18. And um, my mom lived on until she was 89. And uh, she always said, I, I, didn't, I, would, I was afraid to ask my adopted parents about my birth mother. I didn't want to hurt their feelings. I loved them too much. But I, I kept wondering, is she out there? Is, does she think of me? Uh, who do I look like? I don't look like anybody. Um, so I, I approached my adopted mom, and she said, you know, I have one piece of information for you, and that's all I have. So she got out the court paper, and she showed me, and it said, Baby Long Henry. And I did have some information that the family's from St. Paul. So I called 411, and I uh, operator answered, and I said, I have four names and of Long Henry's in St. Paul area. I called the first number and I just said, I'm looking for my birth mother. And she was born, she, I was born in 1955. And he said, I know who you are. I'm, I was supposed to adopt you, but it fell through. And I know where your birth mother is. I'll call her for you. Woo! <laughs> I was on my knees thanking God. I mean, that doesn't happen. People hire investigators to search their birth parents. But God just put everything together for me. And so, the next day, I got a call from my birth mother. <laughs> and she said, finally, finally, I can talk to you. I have thought about you all these 34 years. And I was 34 at the time. I'm 58 now. And I thought about you all these, every birthday, I thought about you. Every Mother's Day, I thought about you. And I, I prayed I did the right thing by you. And so, the next day, she flew from Washington to stayed at my house stayed in one of my beds in my guest bedroom we talked and we talked and we talked and she met my grandchildren her grandchildren my two children at the time and she met them and she was just astounded you know she's just, we look alike We're, we our hair is parted the same way it's amazing and she loves the same things I did and we talked and so I asked about my father 
she said, you need to sit down. So I sat down and she said, she started crying. She goes, you, first of all, you gotta promise me that you'll never tell him where I am. And she started shaking. She was so traumatized. And I said, whoa, she said, I was raped. And um, I just need to let you know that. And, and my family knows, and, uh, but my husband doesn't know. So, and she, he doesn't know about you either. And so I said, okay, that's gonna be, I'm out of the closet now, you're gonna have to say something. And she, so she started breaking down crying and she said that she had been raped and that she wanted something better for me. She had no fallback. She was, would raise me single. She would, her father was abusive and she did what she wanted to, she wanted to give me a chance at life. Uh, she was Catholic, which probably saved my life because of her strong religious beliefs in life. Um, I got the honor to thank her for my life. Thank her for that wonderful sacrifice that she did. And she said that I brought her peace. And that she always wondered, did she do the right thing? Who were those people that raised her? And I assured her that I was raised in a wonderful family. I got to go to Europe. I got to go to summer trips. It was an ideal childhood. And um, she passed on the year after that. I thought we had, would have more time to talk about my birth father. I didn't really want to go there because it was so upsetting to her. Um, when you talked about your rape, it brought back my own rape. I was raped the year before I met my birth mother. And I seem to look back in my life and I see these experiences that I have had in my life. I, when I was 18, I was pregnant and um, single and pregnant. And when I was just 18, I went to Planned Parenthood and almost had an abortion before I came to, <laughs> and I didn't. And I, my son is 40 years old. Uh, I was raped. I understand what that means that you can't remember. I have blacked out everything about the rape except for the afterwards. And uh, here it is, you know, years and years later, I still can't remember it except that it did happen. And somehow I got home and I didn't tell anybody. I didn't go to the police. I didn't tell my family. I told nobody <laughs> because I couldn't remember it. And if I can't remember it, maybe it was my fault. <laughs> and uh, so sometimes things are not fairy tale ending. My story is bittersweet. My birth mother passed away, but I didn't know about it that she passed away. I wasn't there when she died because I didn't find out about it till three weeks after she died because I got a call right uh, by a cousin who said, we don't, the family does not want you to ever contact us again. We don't want your type in our family. We know how you were made and we don't want you to contact the family again. Dottie is gone. She died three weeks ago, by the way. Told me that over the phone. They spread her ashes and I wasn't involved. They won't tell me where she was, her ashes were spread. They don't tell me. I just still don't know the date of her death, except that she died. And when they said that we don't want you in our family, it hurts. It really hurts. And I want, but you know, here's the greatest thing, and I praise God. But because of these experiences I've had in my life, it is, I have a passion. Uh, now in my later part of my life, my kids are growing out of the house and I said, oh, what am I going to do now? God, give me a purpose. Give me something to do with my life. And he's given me a passion for the unborn. He's given me a passion for every baby because it's God that's created these babies. You know, I'm not my father. I'm not my mother. I am a created by God. And he created me for a purpose. And my purpose is to tell every woman that she's precious. Tell every mom that she's precious. Tell every mom that's had an abortion that she's forgiven and that she's precious. And that every baby that you're wanted, someone's gonna want you. If your mom doesn't want you, someone's gonna want you. I had a friend today uh, from my own church that said, you know what, abortion, yeah, that, that hurts, that leaves a hole. But so does, so does adoption. Adoption leaves a hole, so wouldn't it just be better just to abort the baby? This is from a church member of mine. And I said, there's one big difference. That baby gets to live if it's adopted. That baby gets to live and live that life with purpose.
and I'm living my life with purpose. And I praise God that I can sing to him. I'm on the worship team in my church. But that's not who me, uh, defines me at all. That's secondary. It's something I love to do. But what my passion is, is for the unborn. To let everybody know how worthy they are to live. It doesn't matter how you're conceived. Okay, so that's my story. Thank you.